Today on the Q Agenda, the culture may have shifted for the good on gay rights, but gay teens are still struggling with higher suicide rates than their heterosexual counterparts. Is it not getting better for queer kids? Also, the homo homies Jose Rezende and Eric Velasco stop by to chat about breaking stereotypes. And David Foote from Hawaneria Mayanela talks to us about entrepreneurship and opening a business with your mother. That's so cool. All that and more right here on The, the Q, Q Agenda. Agenda. Despite decades of progress on cultural visibility and political rights, queer youth are still at alarming suicide numbers. Nearly 50% of LGBTQ high school students have considered suicide, compared to 13% of straight students. So the question is, is it not getting better for queer kids? Ladies, what do you think? Because I saw these numbers and it's scary. It's still happening. And we, I felt like you know, things were getting a little bit better. We see more visibility. Uh, we have marriage equality, which helped a lot. And kids are still being you know, there are huge numbers in suicide. I think suicide. part of the issue is that even though more visibility is great, with that also comes the opposite of people pushing back and people trying to argue, you know, LGBT people even more. Um, so I think for youth especially, you know, we're in a time where you have an administration that doesn't support your pure existence. And if you have a family that doesn't support you or a school that doesn't support you, how lonely must that feel? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, I was reading a study by GLAAD that not only kind of said we should be very careful in how we talk about suicide, mm -hmm. uh, but that two factors are important in it. It's uh, not only that we're LGBTQ, but also what our, um, our, our tendency is towards depression or mental health issues, that those two things combined is what puts an LGBTQ, TQ, oh my gosh, I can't say our alphabet, <laughs> LGBTQ. TQ, oh my gosh, kids at more of a higher risk. Well, but I would be scared to think about a bunch of kids on medication if they're treated for depression. Well, I don't think the answer to stop sort of suicide attempts would be just to put all the LGBTQ kids on medication. Just well, but in case. you know, it's like you nowadays when you go to a therapist, or the first thing that they do is like they're right. ready to prescribe you a bazillion pills. It's yeah. like this is going to make you feel, and it's like candy. You know, have you taken an antidepressant before in your life? I have. Yes. I have. But I the think th the thing is, is that the first step is making that kid feel like they are in a safe environment and that they're in an environment where they can speak up and share their feelings to their parents, their teachers. I think that's before yeah. you that's, prescribe any pills. No, yeah. no, 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 yeah. The number one indicator to whether or not a child is going to come out and adjust and be happy is how the parental family unit reacts. Right. right. Um, what support they have in their, like you said, in their houses or their workplaces. That's the, no, you don't want to, your kid doesn't come out, you go, you're depressed, let's give you a pill. No, it's like, no, we, we have to surround these kids and with policy uh, at the state level and the national level that supports who they are and their existence to live their life. And as their parents, it's so crucial that you figure out your stuff and you support your kids. That is the number one determining factor. Well, but I mean, we know these things. We now know these things. Yes. And the numbers are still up. So what do we actively do? Like something that we can do right now. I mean, besides doing this, you know, where we have this open conversations about the subject, but something needs to happen immediately because the numbers are just out of control. The Trevor Project just reported to like their last numbers and it was it's insane the amount of kids that are committing suicide. There is good news or attempting to commit suicide, but there is good attempting news. Attempting to yeah, commit yeah. suicide. There is, thank God there's not succeeding. Right. But but the good news is that the older that kids get, the less likely they are. To, it's the, literally between like 10 and 14 or something that, that the numbers are, are right. really are they're at risk. But the older we get, the better we get in terms of accepting our identity and moving yeah, on. Yeah, because I mean at that age, whether you're LGBTQ or not, you know, when you're in high school, middle school, you're trying to figure out who you are. You start feeling the first feelings of being attracted to whatever sex, and you don't know what to make of those feelings. Like, no matter who you are, at that stage of your life, it's like very tricky because it's the first stages of really discovering who you are. Mm -hmm. And then to have the notion of, well, crap, like who I am is not accepted. Because mm -hmm. you're forming your identity in all 
all, you don't want to be different at all at that age. Right. Anything. You want to wear the same clothes, the same shoes. Right. Everything wants to be. You want to fit in. in. Yeah. And yeah. then you yeah. realize this thing about you that's really a gift is, is setting you up for that conflict, the internal conflict. Even though I was quick to accept it, I was like, okay. I mean, personally, I was same. like, I don't have a choice. It took me a <laughs> you while. See my face. But you I don't know, have the, a choice. I think here. also the good news is that nowadays, which I didn't have when I was a kid, they're you know, numbers that you can call and, and there's different services uh -huh. at least uh -huh. out there that are available yeah. to any kid yeah. who's out there right. looking for somebody to listen to them and coach them and just guide them through everything that is, you know, happening in their lives and their changes. Exactly. So the takeaway absolutely is if you're having someone at home that is gay or LGBTQ coming out to you, your reaction is the leading indicator, not on whether or not they will be gay or not, but whether or not they can accept their uh, their their sexuality or not. So, so, so to be kind, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that is all the time we have for today, but please comment on this topic by tweeting at Q underscore agenda and let us know your thoughts. We will be right back here with the Homa Homies. Eric and Jose are two homo homies <laughs> who are not afraid to talk about all things queer or issues facing our community. So please welcome Eric Velasco and Jose Resendez. Welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. Thank you, thank you. Oh my thank gosh. you for having us. First thing you should know is that not all of us speak Spanish and they gave me your names to say, so I'm sorry about that. You did really good. I'm like, Jose Resendez is here with us, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did fine. Yeah, you did fine. Yeah, we're good. We're all good. You guys, I'm so happy to have you both here. I want to know like, where this podcast started and why, and was it like a, to reclaim something? <laughs> well, the whole concept started from um, these two club promoters. Uh, they're uh, producers of, our, of the podcast itself, and the name is Marty Sokol and also Julio Lincoln, and they own the two hottest Latin gay clubs that's been running for a long time now, about 20 years. They celebrated their 20-year anniversary called uh, Club Chico in uh, East LA and also Club Cobra in North Hollywood. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, and they wanted a representative to, um, to, you know, to be the, the face of those clubs, the urban, Latino, queer community. Wow. It's an extension of their platform. So Basically. They, they're all over social media, so they wanted something new and fresh to connect with their consumer. Mm -hmm. So the homies I'm used to, their <laughs> usual tagline is no homo. Right. And here you guys are titling your podcast Homo Homie. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's the OG homo homie I'm on, the OG. on Instagram. Well, I wanted to own the, the word homo and reclaim it, you know, just like it's, it's what we're known for homosexuality. That's who we are. It's, I love it. It's like taking power yeah. over the F word. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, like, basically. And, yeah. you know, just own up to it. And that's what I am. I'm a homo. And I'm also a homie. I'm everybody's friend. So okay. it works. Homo, homie. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you have a huge background in marketing and public relations mm -hmm. uh, with many huge brands. How do you th see things changing now with in regards to LGBTQ content? How what's the response with at least with the podcast so far? Right. I mean a lot of brands are trying to reach the LGBT consumer as they should be, right? But it's not just reaching them during Pride Month. It's throughout the whole year. So having these platforms like podcasts uh, we're seeing that these brands and organizations are trying to reach the community in a deeper level. So we see them reaching out to us. We have a lot of different variety of guests from different organizations that want to get the word out there and that want to get in touch with like an urban Latino um, person. And what, but when you're going out and you're speaking at this place, it's like, you know, you guys were part of Hispanicize and, right. and then you're working with a team and with many others as well. But is it a little bit like people go like, whoa, what is this? What's going on? Like, I've never seen like, you know, like a homo situation happening. Uh, or, or is it like, do they want to find out more? Is, do you get any kind of resistance? Because, you know, our communities well known for having a hard time on digesting that kind of information. Right. Yeah. I think people love the name, right? Yeah, they do. It's it, at first, it's a shocker. It's a shock yeah. value, but it rings. It resonates, and it gets it grasps their attention. That's the whole main point about it. It grasps their attention, and then they get to know us, and they're like, you know what? These guys are actually pretty cool. They're pretty. They're pretty real. They're down to earth, and we're breaking stereotypes. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah, that's you, the important thing at the end of the day. And that's right. what I was going to say. I feel like you guys have the power to go into these communities whereas they think a gay man looks a certain way or behaves right. a certain way to go in and be like, I'm just like you. Exactly. Have you found, is that what you've found? And, and when you find resistance, what do you find? I mean, there's not so much resistance. There's a little bit, but not too much. I mean, I'm not overly feminine mm -hmm. and I'm not overly, ma or, you know, overly masculine either. I'm in the middle. Mm -hmm. And... I'm just me at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I'm myself, mm -hmm. my authentic self. And when I'm um, me, I connect with uh, people on a deeper level. 
interesting because you're talking on that subject, it's like the toxic masculinity subject. Right. Yeah. The machismo. The machismo. The machismo. <laughs> exactly, the machismo. And I mean, literally, it's stereotypical and it's ridiculous, but if I walked into a place and I saw the two of you, the, the first thing that would come to my mind wouldn't be like, oh, gay. You know what oh, I mean? Really? So to break that stereotype. <laughs> if I don't talk. <laughs> no, but, and, 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 and I don't want to write that way about the stereotypes. I hate that whole right. idea. But but it, it'd be surprising. It happened to me. I was lucky enough to be in, in the podcast with yeah. you guys. And when I first met you guys, and you guys are super, you know, I walked in first and I didn't know what to expect. And I walked, you guys are so warm and so friendly. And you guys want to talk about issues that are really affecting the community. I want to know a little bit about your personal journey and coming to terms with who you are and being part of the community. So um, was it easy or was it a little bit more complicated with your families and peers? Um, for my peers, it was a lot easier. But with the family situation, because all Latinos, we all grow up in that machismo, what you just said, machismo environment. And um, it was actually opposite for me in, in a sense that my mom took it harder than my dad did. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, whoa, OK, my dad was more accepting than my mom. And you know, I had my maletas ready to go, all my bags packed. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go to my friend's house. I had the whole game plan. Expecting the and, worst. Yeah, yeah. and my, my dad, I came home one night. I told, you know, I told my mom, and she's all like, I, I would have never thought about it. You know, like, I thought you were out. I thought you got some girl pregnant. I'm like, no, that's <laughs> far from it. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you know something? The good news is that you're not going anywhere, and we're coming back with more from the homophonies <laughs> right here with us. So stick around, we'll be right back. And we are back with the homo homies, Eric and Jose. Hey, Can hey, I hey. be a homie? Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're a homo homegirl. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Uh, before the break, we were talking about your personal stories and how mm -hmm. your family took it, and does that, do you take a part of th that desire to educate and other people? Do you bring that with you in your podcast? Like, what is your what is your hope for for your best biggest hope for that show? I think education is the biggest. Uh, it brings a lot of awareness to the different. You know, people look at LGBTQIA and they're like, "What are all these letters? What do they yeah, all right. mean?" Mm -hmm. And it's like the spectrum is so big now. And the rainbow, like, you know, we're trying to show we're trying all to the colors. Break it down for you, basically. Yeah. Break it down, inform everybody about what each of those letters mean. Okay. And then also bridging gaps and, and making allies with our straight community, too. Because we need that. Of we course. need a lot so of we, support. We've done episodes with, you know, straight allies. We've done trans, uh, lesbian. We've done... Um, you know, fitness, we've mm -hmm. done pop culture, we've done a little bit of everything. Open just relationships, like, uh, mm -hmm. non-binary, uh, and we just had a, a couple of African Americans, which was... Uh, Blossom C. Brown. Blossom C. Brown. And Daryl Stevens. And Daryl Stevens, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, wow. so they were amazing. We're just connecting everybody, especially QTPOC. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's very important. I love he's a QTPOC. I've heard it pronounced cutie pock. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cutie good way of looking at it. I've I never heard it, it that and way. And the other day I heard something I didn't know what it was, and maybe you all can educate me. Mm -hmm. LGBTQ2, the number? Are what we just, that? we're adding numbers now. Oh, I don't know that. No. No, 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 I can't. <laughs> we can't. Uh, I don't get it. I'm not good at that. If you guys know what it means, Is it the power of two? Like, <laughs> guys, I'm just... I'm thinking, you know what? No, I'm thinking has it's it's like our fault. I'm blaming you and me because I think it's non-binary people that have added oh, the two. Oh Lord! I mean, I'm all for non-binary people, but gender conforming. LGBT 2.0. You're also not. Two <laughs> point oh, there you go. I, I just this is I, spiraling. We we don't need an, an AP chemistry formula. <laughs> we don't need one more letter. Why please. not? Didn't I was horrible at math. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I'm terrible at math too. But then you'd have another podcast idea. So I mean, and then again, things are so fluid. Cutie pop podcast. It's like if we keep on adding colors to the rainbow to the flag it's like i don't know what we're gonna end up with because it's like hi by the way this is all in good in good health and right. like joking everybody's welcome yeah. we love oh, yeah. everybody we're joking but yeah. it's just getting a little complicated <laughs> you know what i mean it's, it's like tie-dye on the rainbow flag like damn lesbians <laughs> oh, can you curse on this show the burp we lesbians know. wait so where do we're you see set, the show yeah. like you know two years or three years or four years from now where are the aspirations with it well, we hope to get uh, either a radio show as well, and then we also hope to do something in the similar context of this as yeah. well. You know, yeah. I mean, you guys can just sit here. I'm gonna leave. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we have <laughs> the game you, you know. here. So yes. we're good. <laughs> Done. Yeah. We're, we're always lacking, you know, our voice in the media. Yeah. So yeah. The more, yeah. the better. And yeah. so, anybody out there that wants to start a podcast, like, go for it. You know. 
like we commend you guys as well because you guys are doing for the community as well. And okay. anybody who's putting that information out there is is an asset, and we we totally need it. So and I feel we need this so bad, like this and what you just brought up as mm -hmm. the combination. It's like an us, like you know, yeah. we lift you, you lift us. Like we have to, as a community to come together and work together and getting the message. Previously, we were talking about uh, teenage suicide numbers. It's our responsibility to get this word out there and uh, it, because it's frustrating you know how we were talking about the numbers are not going down but now going a complete left field we have something in common here and is that Juliana, Eric, and I were all nominated for Best of a Lab. Yeah! Where are we going with this? Congratulations the on the it. You wanted the congratulations to you? You, uh, you won, right? Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you. But I was so happy to see you there and, like, you know, and, and share you know, that moment with you. Yeah. And, and uh, you know the the podcast just started and it has a huge amount of downloads. You guys yes. are doing incredibly yeah, great. Yeah, surprisingly, thank you so much to all the listeners. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah it's it's amazing that, that it was such a quick response, like so positive to. Yeah, to we, your we were able to get it on all the platforms really fast, like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Everywhere. and it's just been a really positive reaction to it. You know, everyone wants to be on it. We have like a waiting list of people wanting to be on it. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Where do we find the podcast? Um, you can go to um, our Instagram. Our social media, which is at the Homo Homie Podcast, mm -hmm. all one word, all together, and uh, there you can find all our outlets. And we are also on Spotify, like he said, Spotify, iTunes, Castbox, Libsyn, everywhere. And there's a little bit. Of, I know I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, but like a little bit of a surprise. I think there's some video coming soon. Possibility. Possibility. Oh, it's still in the it. works. We're still working on that. So <laughs> <laughs> getting the kinks out for a little bit. So nice. Yeah. Well, we want to thank Eric and Jose for coming thank today. You. And for more, follow them at the Homo Homie Podcast on Instagram. And to find out where you can listen to their awesome podcast, it's going to be all the information right there. And when we come back, David Foote from Jaboneria Marianela will be joining us. So don't go anywhere. Jaboneria Marianela started in the backyard of David Foote's house back in Venezuela and today is a luxury product with a flagship store in the glamorous neighborhood of Soho in New York City. Please welcome entrepreneur David Foote. Hey guys. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm Welcome nice. to the show. I mean, that was a pretty impressive introduction, so I want to make sure that we like really hit on those points. Yeah. The, well, the line started in a backyard. Well, my the, the line started because my mom started making soaps. And when I moved my mom from Venezuela to the United States, she was looking for work. And you know, as an immigrant, when you come here, sometimes like she's writing books, she has like the, her resume, she's she's been on television, like a million things. And when you come to the United States as an immigrant, the options are pretty dire sometimes, right. and she was living in New Mexico, and I was like, I don't want her to just take like some random degrading job, and she was making these soaps and sending them to me as a gift, and I started giving them to people, and people went crazy over them. They're like, what's in this? Like, my skin looks amazing. And then J. Crew picked it up, Oprah picked it up as one of her favorite things, and then it kind of just started okay, snowballing. Okay, hold on, hold on. So. That's a, that's a very, it went, it went, it went, just Oprah. It went from your friends just to Oprah. Oprah. Yeah, it just kind of, oh, it really nice. snowballed yeah. very quickly. Really? So, yeah, Did yeah, yeah. It? No, yeah. really? Yeah. Like, like, because, but that means it's purposed because that's crazy. That's an amazing thing. Yeah, I went to Oprah's Favorite Things. Uh, it's been... And how did you pitch for Oprah's Favorite Things? I gave it, no, I gave it to a friend of mine who gave it to the beauty editor at W. Then from there, the beauty editor, Tim Vogue, picked it up, uh, who now is Eva Chen, who's in Instagram. Right. Then from there, it went to Oprah's Favorite Things, and then it just kind of made its way. All oh, that dots connected. But it wasn't, yeah. you didn't have it packaged at first like you have now. Like, it wasn't, your mom's making the soap, but when she's giving it to you, did she, did she make the... No, you know we I put mean? it in little, uh, funny enough, we called, they were in little, like, fabric pouches with bows wow. and it was like really cute like that then the line kept on evolving I mean this was several years ago and the line grew then the business went through this weird re-ownership in which we had to get the business back oh. and that was in 2016 and mm. we kind of had to start from zero we had to because it went into different hands and it went to you know uh, and the business changed and that kind of made us kind of redo the whole company redo all the branding and kind of really rebuilt the whole business this was in 2017 and since then, like, I had to move in with my mom. She had to move in with me. We did a Kickstarter. We did, from there, we opened a mall cart in Texas. Then we went, we wow. did a pop-up in Houston. From there, we did seven other pop-ups, opened a store in Williamsburg, and now we have a flagship store in I Soho. Mean, the full American you dream store. Like, we hot sold. Just me and my mom just, like, doing everything. And then now the flagship store in Soho has a spa. It's three floors. Um, 
and I'm in LA because we did a partnership with FabFitFun, the box subscription okay, service. Okay, so I watch a lot of Shark Tank. Yeah. They don't sponsor this show, but I am totally inspired by yeah. this. And I am just wondering, like, so who works on the so soaps now? And so it everything, we have zero, the cool thing about the brand is, like, now that we have the store, the store has a huge kitchen in the back. So everything's made fresh by hand. That's amazing. Zero yeah. waste. Wow. We all, all the packaging, everything is there, and we basically make everything small batches. So we have no waste. We never, we never burn product. We never, because everything is just made until we sell it, and then we make more. And it's you right. and your mom making this now, or is now we people? have other people that help okay, us make good. it too. Yeah, my mom good. makes all the main formulas. My mom makes all the soaps by hand. My mom is the one that we all have the saying, like if you see it, it's me. If you feel it, it's my mom. I do all the packaging, all the branding, all the look. That. She does all the ingredients, all the formulas, all that stuff. What is it like working with your mom? Yeah, I'm always triggered all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm literally constantly triggered. No, it's, I mean, we've been at it for 10 years. When business gets tense or things get crazy, you always, no matter what, it's family. Oh so. You are kind of like it's okay. We're gonna figure this out, and 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 no matter what, you're always gonna be family. So well, that's. Me, tell me about the original conversation with your mom, where you. I just I see this playing out in my head, where you approached her and you're like, you. This is a business idea. Yeah. And we're gonna actually grow it like this. Did she think you were crazy, or did because no, she had well, that? No, but I literally had so much soap that again I started giving it out, and okay. then everyone started being like, "What's in this? Like this cleared my acne, my eczema." And I'm like, really? And at that <laughs> point, I was like using like detergent, like I didn't care. Yeah. And I started using it. I'm like, my skin looks. Six, so, oh, sorry. My skin looks sick, so I um, basically just started giving it out, and then I was like, look, the people are loving this. We should do. I did a little focus group. I remember it perfectly with a bunch of friends, uh -huh. and everyone went nuts over it, and I just started pitching at the stores, and I would literally walk in, and at that time, I was doing a lot of fine art, and I was doing a lot of fine art shows and all these other things, and it was funny because I would just, like, completely switch personas and put on a suit and come in with a suitcase and be like, hi, how are you? I work for Jorge Marinela. And I would do the whole pitch and then at the end I would be like, oh, it's my mom. And they would be like, oh, and then that's how I kind of oh got it into stores. Well, a little bit on the journey too was that, you know, how was it? Okay, mom, I'm gay. Yeah. And I want to make soaps with you. And my mom. So your mom, how does she respond for you, to you being part of the community? And then also now working together, living together. My mom's and being amazing. Part of my mom, well, my mom's always been a creative. She's always had gay friends. So at first, like I, I didn't start dating guys till I was like 32. Oh. So it was like a very late thing. Yeah. And she, my entire family was amazing. They were all very welcoming. In fact, my mom last, this Pride, we did, uh, at the whole store, we like prided it up. And she did Pride bars that had every single color of the flag. Like you have to do it separately. It took forever. And she wow. had these gorgeous Pride bars Are by hand. Are you doing that again this year? Yeah, yeah, okay, for so sure. And where exactly in Soho is this? It's on Thompson Street between Prince and Spring. And are you there a lot? Or? Yeah, I'm yeah. there all the time. Yeah, okay. I mean weekdays usually. And where can people uh, buy the product? You can buy the product at marinella.co. Yes. And to learn more about us, don't forget to check out latv.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.